He said is going the beard, uh, sunnah, or fard. As far as saving the beard for men in Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have mentioned many a hadith in this regard, such as the hadith which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. In which he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَالِفُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ أَوْفِرُوا الْلِحَا The concept of al-mukhalafah, to be different, to be distinct from the non-believers, is something that Islam stated and emphasized from the very beginning. In the way we look, in the way we dress, in the way we worship, to the extent that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade fasting on certain days and praying at certain times and uh, doing things even as an act of worship because it may be similar to the practice of either Ahlul Kitab or others of the non-believers. When the Prophet ﷺ ordered the companions to observe fasting on the 10th of Muharram and he used to observe that, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, the Jews do fast on the 10th. So he said, if I live till next year, I will fast on the 9th along with the 10th to be different. So the concept of al-mukhalafa, to look different, to be distinguished from the non-believers, is something that is considered in Islam. In this hadith, he said, khalifu al-mushrikeen. You have to look different than the mushrikeen. You have to look different than the non-believers. If they save, then you should grow the beard. And if they grow the mustache, then you should trim the mustache. Some people take the text as is and they say, well, nowadays, uh, Jewish rabbis and Christian priests grow long beards. So I am saving, I'm actually shaving, not saving my beard in order to look different than these guys. No, that does not justify shaving the beard. Because the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned in other ahadith that amongst the traditions of the pure nature or sunnah unul fitrah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes uh, his servants to observe with regards to men, is to save the beard and to trim the mustache. And of course amongst that, is shaving the pubic and the underarm hair, and that applies to all, whether men or women. Not only during the state of ihram or in preparation for ihram, but throughout life. From that, the vast majority of the scholars are of the view that growing the beard is a must, which means a wajib, which means a wajib. There is no difference between the wajib and the fard except when Imam Abu Hanifa uh, considers there is some technical differences which makes the fard higher than the wajib. In any case, according to the vast majority of the scholars, and based on the sound of hadith, the growing the beard is a must for men. And accordingly, the opposite is a sin. So uh, shaving the beard, if a Muslim man who has a beard and he shaves his beard without uh, a reason, then he's committing a sin. What could be a reason that would justify shaving? A Muslim Ummah lived for a while and in some many other countries until today under uh, oppression of the tyrant regimes and they would target uh, the practicing Muslims, the religiously committed youth particularly. They would torture people simply because they are recognized as religiously committed they grow their beards. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, foreign intelligence, such as the CIA and others, they categorize the youth now according to the beard. This guy is a practicing Sunni, this guy is whatever from the look. And the look actually gives the impression that person is uh, hopefully religiously committed or not. Also, I would like to emphasize a very important fact. Not every person who is growing a beard or a long beard, uh, he is a righteous person. Righteousness is not only limited to growing the beards 
or looking like one of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, dressing in a certain fashion or wearing a turban. No, this is the morphology which is required. But what's most important and should go along with the morphology is the inside of the person, his morals, his akhlaq, his dealing with others. So that is not sufficient by itself. Nor can it be waived simply because the person, alhamdulillah, prays and the person has memorized the Quran and the person gives the khutbah but he's shaving the beard. He's committing a sin. He's not exempt because he's doing other righteous deeds to shave his beard. So they go hand in hand to practice the adab and the etiquette and the sunan and the wajibat of the Prophet وسلم, and what Islam has instructed us to do in order to be rightly guided.